Hey, Clara Aralene here. Free the feminine, find the soulmate. Day five, our last completion day. Super excited. Um, yeah, I'm posting everywhere, everything everyone is sharing. It's, it's so exciting to see, sisters, where you are taking this. You know, I had a strong vision before the challenge, but to actually see it happening, even on a more, more amazing level than I could have imagined, it's a pure gift. Thank you so much. Today we are rested, right? We took yesterday as our yin day to really connect back to ourselves. All these amazing shifts, all these outgoing, challenging acts we took. We took that day to come back to ourselves and to rest. And from that place, we can rise now into a new cycle of our life. So day five is about how do you turn momentum into outcome? Probably you've had this quite often in your life, right? That there were moments that you felt this incredible momentum, this energy, this forward movement, and you felt things are happening. And from here, everything is going to come okay, become okay. And then nothing happened, right? Everything dropped flat again. You know what I'm talking about? I guess we all know it. I remember it very much from the time when I was a student and I had this feeling of I'm free from home and, you know, that momentum, that energy, and now everything is going to shift. No, not really. <laughs> what is that? What is needed to turn momentum into outcome? to make sure that everything you're feeling now, that energy, that hope, that it actually shifts into you finding your soulmate, because that's what it's about here. And you being able to begin that journey towards your family with him, right? That's what today is about. Five days you have been part of something magical, something that none of us could have created on our own, right? It was done together. It was done with my knowledge, my, me holding the space, my guidance, my experience. I am the top here in Europe, right? In, with my signature program, um, which I think I will also name Free the Feminine, Find the Soulmate. That name resonates so much. But the program has existed now for two and a half years. It has amazing results in getting women in touch with their feminine and finding their soulmate. So you, you have felt what it is to work with a, with a top mentor like that. You've experienced what it is to have this group of sisters around you and to not do it alone anymore. And you have experienced what happens when there is somebody who has a plan, a proven plan, a plan that can take you step by step forward. Experiencing what a top mentor, a top plan and sisterhood, that combination can do for you, right? All that energy, all that hope, all that um, throwing off of old limiting beliefs. Shifting your perspective of dating, right? That was my promise, one of my promises at the beginning. You will never look at dating the same. Well, I'm sure by now you never will, right? You see now that sisterhood, it's important. Mentorship, it's important. Having this kind of plan, not just doggedly going in again and again with those, you know, things like what, what my mother was already telling me, like chat to him, be warm to him, not be too warm to him, you know. That's what all those gurus keep repeating. We started at a very different angle and so much suddenly happened. You've been living on another level, another energy level, another impact level, another action taking level, another level of connection. Giving yourself and each other a boost in dating and life. Again, none of you could have done this on your own. 
we needed each other. You needed me as the as, as the mentor spearheading this. You needed each other. You needed everything. The dating apps. And what have you experienced? The truth of the words, your future is in your hands. We hear those words again and again, but especially in dating, it so often doesn't feel that way. Yeah, I can say the future is in my hands, I know. But if no guys are showing up, what can I do? If, if no guys are ready to commit, what can I do? Right? That, that feeling is very disempowered. But now, I am sure that you too experienced, wow, wait a second. If these shifts can happen in five days, then what can shift in eight weeks? The future is in your hands. And we cannot force one man to commit if he doesn't want to. And I don't suggest trying that either, by the way. We couldn't, of course, right? But there is not one man out there. There is like a hundred million men out there eagerly dating and many of them looking for a soulmate, for a life partner. So it's about attracting that right one and getting into a different space with man and all of that. One of the women actually wrote that, right? Like two axes suddenly showed up, a nice guy suddenly showed up, all that within a few days while I was doing this challenge. You know, she was really in that place of wonder, like I am creating something. The future is in my hands. And it wasn't the solution, right? She, not one of them, I think, was her soulmate yet. But it did give her an experience of, hey, wait a second. I have more to say in this than I ever realized. Exciting, isn't it? Now, the worst thing that could happen now, and what I really don't want for you, is that the, all this momentum does not turn into outcome. And that you just gradually or quickly fall back to the old situation. Right? That's the worst thing. Because then it would be even more proof. Like, see, I can even feel so much momentum and still nothing can happen. See, I can do anything about it, right? That would be the worst. That would really keep you stuck and throw you back. So what is needed to turn this momentum into outcome? Well, before I can answer that, I want to look a bit deeper. And what exactly is that old life and what is that new life that you're experiencing now? <clears throat> the old is very much focused on if it's meant to be, right? Those are pretty Calvinistic, actually, right? If it's meant to be, if it's God's will, um, well, there's other expressions for it, but I adapt, basically. Well, the new one is quite different, taking life by the horns. This is me. This is my life. And I am going to choose how far I'm going to take it. Also in dating, also in love. The old one is outdated strategies and tips. That same old thing that you keep hearing over and over. Don't text too much. Don't text too few. Uh, don't chase him, but don't play too cool either. You know, we've heard all of that, right? And truth is, it hasn't been helping for you. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. Now, you've experienced things that were working for you, that were fun to do, <clears throat> that got you in an excited place, that got man in an excited place, that got things happening. And maybe you were one of those for whom it didn't turn out quote-unquote, well, yet. Maybe you were hurt. Maybe you were rejected. Maybe you asked for something and the other wasn't ready to give it. But that doesn't mean that you didn't come into action, that you are not feeling something different. And actually, quite a few women posted about that. They said, hey, the first time I asked a guy, he said no. <clears throat> and I was almost ready to, you know, chunk him out, chuck him out. But the second time I asked him, he said yes. And it was so amazing to receive that. Right? 
so I want you to keep that space open. It's not about how many, about comparing to other sisters. It's this feeling, this energy, this being part of something happening that counts. The old being immobilized and desensitized. And I'll speak a bit more about that, what I mean by that and what that really is. But I think you know the feeling, right? You're just sitting on your couch and kind of like, yeah, but, but does it have any sense if I go out dating? I won't be meeting any good guys anyhow. Those dating apps are terrible and, and you almost don't feel anymore how much you long for love. Actually, a few women posted about that too. They posted like, you know, I, I, I realize now they were posting, I had actually given up on love. But now I feel like, wait a second, I don't think I'm ready to give up on love yet. Right? That's coming out of that desensitization. And here you're feeling the freedom to feel again, to feel happy, to feel juicy, to feel hurt, to feel moving, to, to feel, to feel butterflies and the freedom to take action. The old style is doing everything alone and we are so tired of it, right? That dating is such a lonely journey, really. I mean, you can chat to your girlfriends about it, but they don't really feel what you're going through. It's more like stories you're exchanging. But now you felt what it is to be really supported with a group of sisters on a shared mission and having somebody there to guide you, to walk in the trenches with you. So that's the old and the new situation, feeling how different that is. Which do you choose? Obvious, right? <clears throat> but I said I would speak a bit more about that desensitization and that immobilization because they are so irrelevant to dating. Because we often don't realize that we're in it. We think this is just how it is. One woman actually signed up with my program recently and was part of this challenge. And she said that, you know, as we were on a webinar together or after, I don't quite remember. She said, you know, for years I had told myself, I am okay. I have my cat. I have my work. I have my hobbies. I have a wonderful home. I am okay. But then a dear friend of hers who was like her single for years and telling herself it was okay went on a dating app and found a guy <laughs> and had this amazing life suddenly. And this woman was too like, wait, wait a second, am I really okay with this? And she woke up out of that desensitization. And actually she also woke up out of that immobilization and started action taking, reading books, taking courses, finding me, signing up, being part of the challenge. And now I saw her writing and posting like, wow, dating suddenly feels so doable. But so we often don't even realize we're in that state. But what state is that really? And this picture, it can be quite shocking. But this is how I see it. We have been frozen like a hair in the spotlight. We all know it, right? They sit in front of your car. You're coming there at high speed and they don't run. And hopefully you can break and otherwise it's the end of the hare or the rabbit. That is really the state we have gotten in. Life dating can be so terrifying that we feel like that hare in the spotlight. We just feel like I, I can't even move. Moving would make it worse, right? That's how it feels. If I would move, if I would try to date, I would feel even more how impossible it is, how I don't even see an outcome. I'd better just sit really still and not feel anything. Then I can survive. That, that is really what that state is. Recognize it. And it's painful. It's not a happy state. And that's why I'm so glad so many women came out of it. 
and we are not those hairs anymore. And what was needed and what you got to be fired up, right? It's like you are, if you're frozen, you need heat, right? You need fire. And that's what we did. We jumped right in. I gave you some really challenging exercises, especially on the first day, some more on the second and on the third. Whew, there was a lot of fire. And then we rested. That fire got you out of that frozen state. And now everything is open and you're back, right? You're back to who you really are. So that was the first thing that was so important, that fire to get you out of that frozen state. Now, to make sure that you don't fall back again into that frozen state and you don't get hurt and move forward, but not move forward, right? Actually seeing yourself moving backward instead of forward. The three things that you really need. First of all, a clear, measurable goal. And my suggestion and what I've set out here from the beginning, be with a soulmate by Christmas. That's a clear, measurable goal. And that gives us the, the, the focus, the, the motivation to actually keep moving. Right? If I say I want to be with a soulmate, no timeline. Yeah, but first, right? We all know how that goes. By Christmas, we have a definite timeline. And I know this is so doable, by the way. It's now, um, what is it? Beginning of September. September, October, November. That's three and a half months. That's so doable. Especially because you are now all fired up, right? I don't have to take you anymore from that frozen state. You're already fired up. This is, yeah. So setting a clear, measurable goal, that challenges you, right? Saying, I want to be married in five years. Yeah, that's not going to challenge you right now. So that's number one that we need. Number two, so important, and I thank it to Tony Robbins to help me see this. So actually, I was already doing this, but, but he named it so beautifully. Take action today before you even leave this challenge. Before you even leave this challenge, take action. And in number three, I will talk more, talk more about what action. But why before you leave this challenge and why action? Well, truth is that momentum, energy, hope, good intentions, they are just dreams if they are not backed up by action. This has been proven over and over, and we all know this. What is the example? New Year's resolutions, right? We make a resolution, and maybe we even take an action of signing up for a yoga class or a fitness program or whatever it is about. But then, by the end of February, we don't go to the yoga class anymore. We don't eat healthy anymore. And, oh yeah, I had a chill. I had an good year as a resolution, didn't I? Right? We need an action now. An action that's like burning your ships. An action that's like, I, I can't go back. It's not like a yoga class that I can just stay away. I took an action which is like burning my ships. I can't go back. That is that kind of action we need. And before you leave this challenge, because what happens if you postpone, and I really call it postpone, you will say, yeah, but tomorrow is really soon, right? I say, no, no, no. Tomorrow is way up, way too far off. Because even if you wait till tomorrow, what is actually happening there? Actually, a decision has been made. I am not doing it now. I'm telling myself I will do it tomorrow, but that's just a story. The decision is I am not doing it now. So the decision is actually negative. And once that decision has been made once, guess what? Tomorrow it will be really easy to make that decision again. I am not doing it today. Yeah, I will do it tomorrow. See that? It's almost like a smoker and that cigarette. 
if they take that first cigarette, they'll take the second and the third and the fourth. And, and we all know it, right? I've had moments with screen addiction, actually, because I sit so much behind the computer that actually became an issue. And it's all fine again now. Well, some t it's still challenging because I cannot really let it go, right? I have to be behind the screen. Um, so I know it's a real challenge. I know it's really not easy. And I know that refusing to decide against what you want in this moment is the key. Refusing to decide against what you really want. You want to take action, right? You want to move forward. That's what your whole heart and soul want. That's your goal. But if you decide not to do it now and tell yourself you'll do it tomorrow, boom, beginning of the end. So that is really important. And thank you, Tony Robbins, for pointing that out to the whole world. And it's one of the reasons of the amazing success he has with people, right? So the finale tonight will be giving you an opportunity to really take a step. And I am seeing many sisters taking that step tonight. And that will be so amazing, right? When we can really keep traveling together with what we have created now and really find a way to commit to ourselves like, yeah, no, we, we can't really go back. From here, we can only go forward. And if it sounds scary, in a way, yes, because it's taking you out of your comfort zone. But there's nothing spooky or anything about that, right? Nothing like that. So, and the third one, keep the fire burning so that action needs to be an action that helps you to keep the fire burning. The mentorship, the sisterhood, the plan, the three things that went into creating this fire now, you need to make sure that you keep having those in your life until Christmas and you're with your soulmate and maybe even after, but that's another thing. You need to keep those fires burning because otherwise that cold will just boom, grasp you again. So that's the secret. And a beautiful example of that, I think, is the five second rule. Did you ever hear about that? The five second rule, what it says is um, that if you want to do something, you have five seconds to do it. And if you don't do it in those five seconds, you don't do it. And, and what, what is meant by this? It comes from, I think Mel Robbins is her name. She discovered it in a time she was really stuck in her life. She was terrified. She, they were having, she and her husband were having big debts. She saw no way of getting income. And she was so terrified. She was like that hair, right? And she in the morning, knew all those things she needed to do. And instead of doing any of them, she just couldn't get out of bed to the point that her children would miss the school bus. This was the United States because she herself was too late getting out of her bed. And that kind of lost to her like, oh my God. And then she discovered like in the morning when the alarm goes and within five seconds, I jump out of my bed I am out of my bed and then the rest will start moving. But if I don't take those five seconds, my mind will find all sorts of reasons not to do it. So I think that's a good example. And by the way, millions of people are following her method and having so much benefit from it because it, it, it breaks through something. And this is so different from traditional psychology, right? which talks about the patterns and the fear. And I've done this work. I sometimes do this work. It is amazing. It is powerful. But if you want to be with a soulmate, as you are wanting to be with a soulmate, you need something else. Or you need something else too. Something to get you out of your frozen state. And we found that here. And you are now on fire. Something to keep that fire burning and to turn that momentum into outcome. And this principle 
of taking an action now before you leave the challenge. It's an important key to that. So I hope that also helps you think differently, right? I promised you would think about dating differently. Well, this is part of it. Allowing yourself to be that hare or actually coming back alive. That's a choice that determines the outcome in dating. You need, you never need to be stuck again. No need to be ever stuck again. No way. You learn something else here. And if ever you get close to getting stuck, you can remember all of this. So how are we going to complete? Do the meditation. It will help you root deeper into the fire that you're feeling now. Do the worksheet. It will help you create um, to start to shift that momentum towards your outcome and be at the finale and be ready to actually make a big step there and burn the boats that could get you back into that frozen state. Super excited to be able to offer you this and to show you really how to turn fire into outcome momentum into outcome and to show you something about that that frozen state that you have most likely been in and how you never need to go there again thank you so much super excited about this last day and see you at the finale clara aralena at the love for life academy aloha